reckon yourself dead indeed to sin but alive to God. Okay, there's there's everything I want to say tonight. Dead to sin but alive to God. Ooh, it's not just God. the the resurrection requires that there need to be a death. Because the greater the death, the greater the resurrection. Yeah. So when you get saved, there's a lot that we die to, but as you as you go through yeah. sanctification and the Allow God to change you, change you into the image of His dear Son Jesus Christ. There'll be a, there'll be a thousand of deaths to yes. die, so to speak, Amen. in different areas of our life. Right. Okay, so reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Where does where does sin want to reign? Your in your mouth and your body. That you would obey its lust. Therefore, okay. So verse thirteen said, "Don't yield your members as instruments of." Uh, to have unrighteousness yes, and the sin, but yield yourself unto God as no. those that are alive from the dead. Yay. Okay, there's a whole thing we will say. That's dead awesome. to sin, but alive unto God. Yeah. What we don't want to do is just walk around, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. We're going to die, but we're going to be resurrected, yeah. okay? Amen. But dead to sin, but alive, and when we become so alive to God, that keeps us from things, things that will bring death. Amen. Let's just go down. Verse, uh, uh, nine, 19. Uh, I speak of the manner of the men of infirmity of the flesh, for whereas you have yielded the members of your service to uncleanness and iniquity, now yield the members of your body to righteousness and to holiness. Woo. Now, anybody beside me, did you ever learn how to yield your body to sin? Yeah. Yeah. To unrighteousness. Yeah. Now, the same way, okay, so the way we gave ourselves to the things of the world, we're going to give ourselves even in greater measure. To God. Amen. Okay, let's turn to Matthew chapter 16. And we'll, we're starting, uh, we're just going to come to a place where we stop. I want to, the Spirit of the Lord wants us to understand some things about the cross. That, uh, when you look up the meaning of the cross, it means they pull a cross as an, as an instrument of capital punishment. It speaks of death to self for Christ's life. And, uh, here, here's where much of the churches today that they they want to they want to believe in a crossless religion or a bloodless religion. They've never, they've true. been in the church, but they've never been to the cross. They've never been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, and we're going to look at this a different aspect. Verse 24. Then said Jesus to his disciple, and the disciple means a pupil, a learner, a student. How many want the Holy Spirit to teach you? Okay, then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come unto me. Now, it's one thing to come to church, it's another thing to come to the God of the church. Amen? Amen. That's what we wanted. That's why we, we pray to meet with God. We sing unto God. We praise God. We worship God. We adore Him. We fellowship with God. We want to commune with God. We want to meet with God. We don't want to be in God's house and ignore the God of the house. It's, a, it's all about relationship with God, fellowship with God, partnership with God, communing with God. So Jesus said, if any man will come back to me, let him deny himself. Now, what you're going to find is that it's very hard in the beginning for selfish people to be a real Christian. Because of, uh, our, our, I'm so ashamed of how, how selfish I was when I first got saved. So many people, they, there's, that's a death. That's something that had to come to the cross. That we change from the self life to, to live it for God. That here's basically where God wants to bring us to. And, and understand this is the process. And this is where the cross comes into uh, activation within our life. That we become changed from being selfish. Well, let's put it this way. The Bible said, love not the world. And the last day men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, lovers of darkness. So they love, they love pleasure, love self, more than being a lovers of God. So there are people that, that will love God this much, but they love themselves a whole, a whole bunch more. And it's hard for them to have right priority. So come down to the two greatest commandments. Love God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to find people very difficult to love other people uh, because they're full of themselves. They love themselves and they, they want them to be in control of Jesus, it's hard for them to make Jesus. They don't mind Jesus being the Savior. If you give a choice, you want to go to hell, you want to go to heaven. Well, I want to go to heaven. But I don't want the, what they told the Hebrew children, but they told Moses, we will not have this man reign over us. 
who made you a ruler and a judge over us? The correct answer was God. Yeah. But they didn't see it. They didn't, uh, they didn't discern it. Okay, so what? If we, come, if we come to the house of God and we're going to be born again, we're going to be a real Christian, then here's what Jesus is, is saying something. He is, if any man will come unto me. Now, there's a great big difference between just coming to church every now and then and coming after God. Yeah. Let, let me put it this way. Thank you, uh, say, the, say the same thing over and over again. When I met Pastor Jane and I began to fall in love with Pastor Jane, I want to spend time with Pastor Jane. I want to spend more time with Pastor Jane. I, I can't. Uh, I want to talk with her. I want to be with her. I want to spend time with her. Jesus said, "If any man come after me, yeah. see, it's about love. It's about yeah. loving God. Love God. Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself." Yeah. So there's a stronghold when Jesus said, "If any man will come after me, let him deny himself." Yeah. Now, if self is my God, many times. You're going to come in contact with a whole lot of people. And they will say, well, God told me. God told me to do this. God told me to do that. God told me to do this. God told me that. And what says they're not lying? Because themselves are still their God. And I've been there. Okay, I'm not talking down to the people. I'm saying, I was there. I was saved. And when I'm after the first love, my first love began to wear off. And I began to cross my desert time, my desert time, my wandering in the wilderness. There was a whole bunch of stuff in here in the wilderness. The sins of the outward man dealt with at the Red Sea. The inward man is dealt with in the wilderness. And no one gets to the promised land without Jesus without Jesus becoming Lord. So what will happen, what God wants to do, we, we have to come to a place by faith believing. we got to believe with our life that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and God's ways are higher than our ways. And that's very hard. That was hard for me being so stubborn, self-willed, and independent spirit, and self-idolatry, in case of a long, long as I'm in control, things are going real well. As <laughs> long as I'm making decisions, come on. But see, when, when you, you know, someone someone will preach a message and, and they give a doctor call, how many want Jesus to be the Lord? Well, that sounds real good. Yes, I want that. But then realize that the action would have to be laid to the root of me being my own God. My time, come on, my attitude, what I thought, how I behaved, what I spoke, what was going on in my heart, what was going on in my little body, what was going on, what was operating in my will, in my motives. Come on, saints of God, there's where the cross comes in, okay? There are things that have to be dealt with. So, see, sometimes we don't understand what happened. We go to church and someone preaches a message and the little altar call comes up. How many want Jesus to be the Lord? If you're here tonight, and Jesus may be your Savior. How many want to be your Lord? Oh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds that sound real good. So then I, I leave the church bell and go, pow, 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 pow. Everything began going wrong. I'm going, what? I'm finding you, Satan. What happened was, God began to reveal to me that I was in control. And uh, I'm sure none of you have ever been there, but you might run into one or two people out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You say, you want to go to hell? You want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven. But uh, I don't want to give up control of my life. I want to be in charge. Yeah. Okay, so that for Jesus to become Lord, you don't make major decisions without seeking God. Yeah. And I'm telling you that I had that independence, but I had that stubborn, that self-will, I was full of self-idolatry, and I'm telling you, those things don't die very easy. Amen. Some of these things will play possible within your life. Yeah. I mean, let me put it this way, and I know I've said this before, but, you know, uh, in the tabernacle of Moses, those 2,000, 3,000 pound ox, oxen and bullets that they were offering for the second one, you know, those those 2,000 pound oxen didn't say, oh, can I be next? Can I can I be put upon the altar? Burn me. I'll hurt me next. I want to be next. No, there. Ah, ah, ah. No, there was a fight went on. And you're gonna find there'll be a power struggle between you and God sometime. Yeah, yeah. You you may pray like I did some little prayer. Oh, that sounds real good. I want <laughs> Jesus to be my Lord. Okay, God said, Pow, I heard that. Yeah. Now let's put that. Now, what what I'm telling you with me may not be with you. But with me, that took over a decade yeah, amen. of what I called the dealings of God. Okay? Yes, the, the, Pastor Jane, I call it the dealings. Be dealt with by God. In other words, 
If you ask God the teacher and guide you, if you welcome and invite the discipline of the Spirit, if you welcome the chastisement of God, if you welcome God to circumcise your heart, there'll be some season that you go through that can be very painful, very difficult, is that punishment is that God is tearing down things that will keep you from fulfilling uh, pride that knows that real easy. Amen. Pride will play possum. Self-redemption will play possum. And there's different things within your life that will hide. Yeah. Okay? And uh, so let me, let me get into this because uh, I want to go I want to go a little bit further. Okay, so he said, Jesus said to his disciple, the people, the Lord of the Spirit. And if, if you want to really be a disciple, if you want to learn, if you want to be a pupil, if you want to be taught by God, then Jesus is saying, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. The word deny there means disown. And it means, in the Greek, it means abstain. Abstain from yourself. Amen. Abstain from selfishness. Abstain from selfish ambition. Abstain from self-exaltation. Mm. Abstain from self selfing the center of... Mm. That's true. <coughs> yeah. yes. If any man will come unto me, let him deny or abstain from himself. Now, again... 2 Timothy, don't turn to that, but 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 said, In the last days perilous and difficult times shall come, because men shall be lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure, or they be lovers of God. There are people, there's 168 hours in a week, and there are people that will tolerate a dead church service for an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes, well, 45 minutes to an hour and a half on Sunday morning, and then they... They're out there in the world the rest of the time. And the devil will take that deal any time. Okay? 168 hours. Like it. The devil doesn't care if he comes to church for a couple hours out of the week. Amen. In the last days, perilous and typical times shall come. Come men shall be lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Okay? So when that gets changed, when we come to Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first, seek ye first the, kingdom the kingdom of God, God and His, His righteousness. Then all these things should be added to you. Amen. And you see, when, when I'm in control of my life, when self is upon the throne, and I've got the independent spirit, and say, like, I'll do all these other things, and then if there's any time and energy, well, I'll, well then I'll come to church. Uh, if there's any money left over, then I'll pay tithes. If there's nothing else, then you come to prayer. Wow. Quiet, right there. Amen. <laughs> if any man will come after me, let him deny, himself. let him deny himself. Amen. Amen. Okay, to deny himself and take up his cross. The will's got to be dealt with, okay? Amen. The will has got to be dealt with, take up his cross. It, it speaks of exposure to death. It speaks of self-denial. Take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily and come and, and follow me. The word follow me is reach, is to reach after me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. <laughs> There will be people who say, I will not give God control of my life. I've had people tell me, God will never control me. Jesus said, whoever will save his life, I'm going to withhold my life from God. And the Word of God says, if we withhold our life from God, we'll lose it. Mm-hmm. In other words, see, there are, there, you're going to come in contact with people that will not give their life to God because they want to be in control. They... Mm-hmm. See, God says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, my ways are higher than you. A lot of people don't believe that. By faith, you begin the journey that God knows more than us. God who created us is smarter, Amen. wiser, and He's not trying to withhold things. He's not trying to withhold pleasure. He's not trying to withhold the world. Is that what He's saying? If you do things my way, you will go much further, Amen. much higher. You'll be much higher. I have this inheritance for you. Amen. And if we won't give up control of our life, God said, see, here's what will happen. He that, well, I mean, okay. Whoever will save his life or withhold his life from God, won't give his life, shall lose it. But many times people think that they're winning because they're in control. And they never understand that they never saw, they never entered in, they never realized, they never understood the great thing that God had in store for them. They did something, they went, they went on their journey, they went this far, and what God had was was light years more for them, but they thought they were winning because they got their way. And that's basically what the cross is. Faith comes down. Faith is like, huh, 
Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. Okay, so by faith then you begin the journey. Okay, so then, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. There will be times when flesh want to do this, and God will say, do that. When you do by faith what God says to do, you will win, you go hard, you'll be happy, you'll be more fulfilled, you'll get the blessings of God, you have the favor of God. God will activate, God will move abundantly and bountifully with your life. If we will not surrender these things to God, we never realize, we never enter into the fullness. Here's the way God puts it in that Corinthian. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the great thing that God has in store for them. But now God is revealing them to you by His Spirit. Yes. When we withhold surrendering to God, we withhold, we think we're winning. I'm in control. Yeah. I'm in the life. I'll do what I want to do. I'll, if I want to do this, I'll do this, I'll do that. And, if, and uh, I will not surrender to God. Amen. Thinking we're winning and never see. See, it would be like this little closet, like spending your life in that little closet thinking you're winning and God had the whole, whole, a whole earth for them. Okay? But spending their whole life in that little closet. I'm winning! I've got my way! <laughs> what I'm saying is the cross will deal. The cross will deal with that independent spirit. Amen. See, there's something... That's why this remnant message so resonates within me and that book, The Path, because there's something called the fullness of the Spirit of God. Amen. And uh, I had a pastor over me for three years and he said this hundreds and hundreds of times. He said, many people have Jesus as the Savior, but Jesus is not Lord of their life. Amen. He said that so many times. It, it, it's so good in my spirit that, that it's such a reality because I had such a uh, independent spirit, that stubborn, that self-will, that self-idolatry, that being in control and because sometimes it, it sometimes it, it's a defense mechanism because we're afraid to be hurt again. Yeah, that's true. So we control everything. Yeah. So we build I built a wall here and I built a wall here and I built a wall here and I built a wall here. I and I'm convinced I'm winning. Yeah. But what I didn't realize I just yeah. built a prison. Yes. Mm -hmm. I built a little prison and I'm in this little jail yeah. and everything going on out there and I'm trying to protect myself. Amen. Sounds like me. So that, that, that's, it's, it comes down to we got to have faith. But we have to, it goes beyond faith because faith works by love. 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 So the true grace to him thou shalt love you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our defense mechanism, loving pleasure, loving the world, loving self. Can you imagine rejecting people or keeping people astray and loving a dog, a cat, a pet? <laughs> Kiss a dog, hug on a cat, and reject people? You sweet little... Oh, you just... <laughs> and mean about people. <laughs> so we had to understand this important so we, we don't want to come to a prayer meeting and not pray Amen. we don't want to come when people singing the a high priest that God not sing we don't God will have the praises of his people God is seeking them that will worship Amen. so he's saying come if, if any man will come after me let him deny himself Amen. sometimes you hear a voice on church night tired stay home I stay home. If any man will come back to me, let him deny what he wants to do. Take up your cross. Amen. Amen, Lord Jesus. And come and follow me, Amen. which means reach out to me. Whoever will save his life will lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake. Now, one of the negative 